we take to the trees for a little bird listening. Turns out, as Faith Saley will tell us, they make beautiful music. You're listening to the last known recording of a mating song of the Kauai O'o, a Hawaiian bird now considered extinct. A male O'o is calling out for a female mate who will never come. That song inspired this song by composer Alexander Liebermann. If every artist has a muse, Liebermanns have feathers and wings. I think everything starts with my trip to Costa Rica in February 2020. I mean, I'm a city person. I'm born in Berlin, Germany, and I lived in New York for almost 10 years. And in Costa Rica, I was just exposed to a lot of wildlife. But when the pandemic hit and he was locked down in Berlin, he himself began to feel like a caged bird. That was until... Suddenly, I heard them with different ears. I was just like, oh my god, these are spine-tingling like calls. And so unpredictable and hauntingly beautiful. And I just started transcribing them. So would you call the bird song that you listen to and transcribe, do you call that music? <laughs> That's a very philosophical question. It depends on your definition of music, but um, I would definitely consider them music. He began to post videos of birds and their musical songs to Instagram. And musicians began to reply with their versions, replicating tweets, trills, and crescendos in all manner of instruments. And along the way, he began to hear the world differently. A lot of times, people consider contemporary music, classical music, to be extremely abstract and difficult. But when you look at those transcriptions of some bird song, nightingales, for example, are extremely complicated. <coughs> Full of noise. And people have no problems with them, right? So to some extent, it might also change the listening experience of people. Tell me what you hear. So it gets more complicated, right? To transcribe each bird's song, first he slows it down, spending hours analyzing each sound, micro note by micro note. I have to say, sometimes it makes your head spin, <laughs> but nature is so versatile, and like you would discover a bird song that you would not think imaginable. Just recently, I like transcribed the song of a Oropendola. It is absolutely crazy. You would never believe it's a bird song if you listen to it. And to my own surprise, I noticed that Björk used it in one of her songs. And transcribing the birds has enabled Liebermann's own compositions to take flight. That high A that I repeat is the highest note of the second line that the bird sings. Has listening to birdsong changed the way you perform and compose music? Definitely. Progressively, gradually, I implemented more and more of those very, very complex gestures in my music. Liebermann's music seems timeless, but its inspiration may not be. 
take the Javon Piad starling. It's believed the wild birds primarily vocalize to communicate with other birds to attract mates or defend territory. This starling's song is so prized by collectors that it's been trapped nearly out of existence. And in captivity, the lonely birds have begun to lose their notes. By transcribing the starling's song, Lieberman hopes the world will heed the call of the wild before it's too late. <laughs>